the power screw. You will find here many kinds of mechanical devices which produces the linear motion for machines such as automation equipment, packaging system and the machine tools. Power screw, jacks and the ball screw are designed to convert the rotary motion into a linear motion and to exert the necessary force to move a machine element along a desired path. They use the principle of the screw thread and its mating nut. The common requirement in a mechanical design is to move the component in a straight line like elevators move vertically up or down. Machine tools move cutting the tools or parts to be machined in a straight line either horizontally or vertically to shape a metal into desired form. A precision measuring devices moves a probe in a straight line to determine electronically the dimensions of a part. Assembly of the machine required many straight line motion to insert the component and fasten them together. So there are number of examples where you will find the application of a power screw. So power screw is used to convert the rotary motion into the uniform, slow and powerful linear motion such as required in the vices, then presses, jacks, lathes and walls. Three essential parts of a power screw are screw, nut and the part to hold together the screw or the nut in the place. We will find the application is to raise the load, example if a screw jack and a scissor jack. This figure shows here a cut view of a jack and we can have a linear motion and this tommy bar will give the rotary motion. This one is the same as a nut, so nut is fixed here and therefore the screw will move up and down as the tommy bar will move. So we can put up the weight here on the collar and the weight can be lifted up or down depending upon the motion of the tommy bar whether we will rotate in a clockwise or anti-clockwise. Objective here is to find out how much torque is required to lift the load or how much torque is required to move the load in a downward direction. At the same time if we are using this as a screw jack for lifting the car and we want here that the screw jack should be at its position that is, is called as self locking. So without any external force if the screw jack will remain stationary even the load is kept that is called as self locking. Self locking means that external force is required to move the load in a downward direction. It is true here that every time if the load is there and you want to raise it the external torque is required. Another application we will find here to clamp a workpiece. For this one we are using a vise. Again we have here a nut and this nut is fixed nut and over this we have a power screw. This one is free collar so that we can hold the job by rotating the tommy bar. So we have to apply the torque here. How much torque is required to tighten the grip of a workpiece in a clamp that we are interested. The third figure you will find the application again in the of a power screw in the case of manual press working. So again we have here the nut is shown the nut is fixed here and we have a power screw. This power screw may be of a square type or acme type of threads are used and we have provided the handle here. Handle is provided to apply the torque. Here again you observe the third situation where we have the anti friction power screw bearing. So this one is same as our lead and our nut and in between the recess here the balls are provided. So ball screw is similar to the function of a power screw but the configuration is slightly different. The nut contains here the many small spherical balls that make rolling contact with the threads of the screw giving low friction and the high efficiency when compared with the power screw. In the power screw we are not using the spherical balls and therefore we have pure translation motion and because of the spherical balls are used we have rotational motion. Because of a low friction and the high efficiency as compared to power screw, the anti friction power screw are commonly used in the machine tools, automation equipment, vehicle steering system, actuators on the aircraft. There are a huge number of applications of a anti-power screw because of their high efficiency. As far as the advantage are considered of a power screw, we can list here six advantages. The very first one is at a very high mechanical advantage. It can carry a very large carrying capacity, compact construction, simple to design. Fabrication is easily done on the lathe machine and it can be designed with a self-locking property. That is the external torque must be applied to move the load in a downward direction. 
Disadvantages of the power screw is that power screw have a poor efficiency and therefore a ball screw is normally used because of a low efficiency of 40%. High friction causes the rapid wear of the thread. These are the two disadvantages of the power screw. Whereas in the case of ball screw, we have a low friction and have a high efficiency as compared to the power screw. So either we are using the square thread or we are using the Acme thread. This figure represent here the square thread. This one is representing the axis. Here we'll define some terms which are commonly used in the screw threads. The first term we'll define as a pitch. Pitch is the distance between the two corresponding point. That is the two crest. The distance between the two crest. Pitch is labeled as P and it is the distance between the adjacent threads forms measured parallel to the thread axis. The outside diameter here is called as the measure diameter which is represented as DO. And this one is the largest diameter which is measured from crest to crest. So if you draw horizontal line from crest to crest it will give you the outer diameter equal to DO. Similarly, if you measure the diameter from root to root, that diameter will be called as the core diameter is represented by DC. It is also called as the minor diameter. So DO represent here the major diameter, DI represent here the minor diameter. Sometimes it is also called as the root diameter. Then we have a mean diameter. Mean diameter is represented by this line and this line. The mean diameter is given as DO plus DI. That is the outer diameter plus inner diameter divided by 2. The thread can be right hand or can be left hand but by default they are always right hand. So all the threads are made according to the right hand rule unless otherwise noted. That is if the bolt is turned clockwise the bolt advance towards the nut. That is called as the right hand rule. There is a difference between the pitch and the lead. Pitch is defined as the distance between the two consecutive crests measured parallel to the axis. Whereas the lead L is the distance the nut move parallel to the screw axis when the nut is given one turn. So how much distance is the nut will travel in a vertically upward direction or downward direction that is called as lead. There is a different relation between the lead and the pitch. If we have a single start thread, in that case the lead is same as the pitch. In general, we have lead is equal to the number of start multiplied by pitch. That is we have L is equal to number of start N multiplied by pitch P. As far as the single start is there, we have number of start is equal to 1. So lead will be same as equal to pitch. So in case of single thread, we have lead is same as equal to pitch. A multiple threaded product is one having two or more threads cut beside each other. As far as the standardized products are considered screws, bolts and nut, they have all the single threads. In case of double start screw, which has a lead is equal to two times the pitch. In the case of double thread, lead will be same as equal to two times of pitch. Similarly, for triple start, it will be three times of pitch and it will continue. The metric threads are specified by writing the diameter and the pitch in millimeter. So we have to write here M for metric and then you have to write down diameter, say M12. 12 represent here the diameter, which one is a nominal diameter. Multiplied by you have to write down here the pitch. Let's suppose we have pitch is equal to 7.75 mm. So designation of the screw is given as M. Then we have nominal diameter and then we have pitch. Otherwise you have to write down it's a right hand or it's a left hand. So M stands for here the metric notation. 12 stands for nominal diameter and 1.75 stands for pitch. This one is called as the metric designation. Two types of thread profile are normally preferred. First one is a square thread and then we have Acme thread. Both the square and Acme thread profiles are almost similar except in the square thread we have sharp 90 degree. 
the distance between the two corresponding points here is called as pitch. The thickness of the square thread will be same as equal to pitch divided by 2. So we have P by 2 is the thickness and uniform thickness over the entire depth and the depth is same as also equal to P by 2. These are supposed to be the strongest thread and cannot carry any type of radial load. Manufacturing is very difficult as far as 90 degree is considered. So that is a disadvantage of the square thread. It has a higher efficiency as compared to the Acme thread. But due to the machining problem of 90 degree, this thread is difficult to machine. Some information I have shown here about the nominal diameter, major diameter, minor diameter and the area of the core. You can find this data according to the IS4694-1968. This data is for fine series. Likewise, we have data available for core series type of thread here. Say for example, we have nominal diameter equal to 10. Then we have major diameter equal to 10. We have minor diameter equal to 8. So this standard you have to follow. And the core area which will resist the tension and the compression will be 50.3 mm square. Like M16, we have nominal diameter equal to 16, we have major diameter equal to 16, minor diameter equal to 14 and we have core area is equal to 154. So this information is available in a standard tables and you have to refer the tables for collecting the area of the core area. The second type is we have a ACME or also called as a trapezoidal thread. The distance between the two consecutive points on the thread. So this one is representing thread here is called as pitch. As you visualize here, there is a slant is given that is slope is given. This is not exactly 90 degree. The total include angle for the Acme thread is equal to 2 pi. And this value of 2 pi is close to 29 degree. So the square threads have a shaft 90 degree while in case of Acme thread, the angle between the two crest is equal to 29 degree. Square threads have a higher efficiency but a manufacturing difficulty because of vertical 90. Whereas the Acme thread are easy to manufacture. In the case of square thread, we can transmit the power in both direction. Even in the case of Acme thread, we can transmit the power in both direction. The third type is a buttress thread in which the power is transmitted in the one direction only. As shown in the figure here, we have a buttress thread is shown here. The distance between the corresponding point here from this point to this point is called as pitch. This time we have depth of the buttress thread is taken as 0 0.663 times p. Because of this, this thread is strong at the bottom and we stand more forces. The angle form here is equal to 45 that is the angle through vertical and this edge we have angle is equal to 45. And the thickness at the top is approximately equal to 0.163 times the pitch. So buttress type of thread is used for transmission of a power in one direction only and the angle is equal to 45. It combines the high efficiency of a square thread and easy in the manufacturing. It is stronger than other forms because of the greater thickness of the root. You will find here the thickness at the root is higher as compared to the square thread and the Acme thread. The mechanics of a power screw here will discuss how much torque is required to raise the load or to move the load in a downward direction. For this one, we'll consider here a power screw. The power screw is a device which is normally used in machinery to change the angular motion into the linear motion. So we are applying here the angular motion and thereby we are getting the linear motion of the load is equal to W. To develop the equation for a torque here, we'll consider a screw jack which carries a load equal to W and is supported by the base of a jack. The contact between the screw and the base takes place along a portion of the thread. By applying the force P on the handle, the screw can be turned and to raise the load W. If the thread is unwrapped, that is for one revolution, you will get the slope of the thread that is equal to lambda, where lambda is called as lead angle. And let's consider here, we have a mean diameter equal to dm. 
So if I draw this figure here, then the vertical distance is covered equal to pitch in one revolution. And uh, if the mean diameter equal to dm, then we can develop the relation between lambda, pitch and the mean diameter. So I will consider this right angle triangle. So our discussion is for single start thread and we have lambda is the lead angle. The circumference will be equal to pi into dm. So base will be same as equal to pi multiplied by mean diameter equal to dm and the vertical distance it will travel will be equal to pitch p. In one revolution the screw will travel a distance equal to pitch. So if you take the here tan, tan will be opposite upon adjacent. In that case we will get tan lambda is same as equal to opposite is pitch divided by pi multiplied by dm. So when we apply the force to the handle which is the distance of A from the axis of the screw in that case we can generate a moment and this moment will be shown like this. Because of this moment M or we can say the torque T the screw will rotate and if the screw will rotate in an anticlockwise sense in that case the nut will move in an upward direction thereby the load can be lifted. So there is a friction is occurring between the nut and the screw and you have to overcome that friction force by applying the force equal to P. So we will consider here a point load acting as in a downward direction that will represent by block here. So we will develop here one more FBD that weight is acting W in a downward direction. We apply the force in a horizontal direction equal to P. Normal reaction will act perpendicular to the plane of thread. So load W will act in a downward direction. Here the force P is applied to raise the load W. That force is applied horizontally. And the friction force parallel to the plane of the thread that is along the lead angle lambda. And we have a normal reaction which is perpendicular to the plane. So we have normal reaction equal to N. If the normal reaction equal to N and the coefficient of friction for the screw is equal to mu then we have friction force is equal to mu into n. So we will develop this FBD for analysis purpose and we can calculate here the horizontal force required to lift the load. So we have a concurrent force system in this case and we have number of forces involved is P that is the external force load W normal reaction N and the friction force F. Here the force P is incoming, we will show it outward that will be equal to the force is equal to P. The W is a downward force is acting vertically downward. So that is outgoing force that equal to load equal to W. Normal reaction here will make an angle equal to lambda with the vertical. So this one is a normal reaction N which makes an angle equal to lambda that is a lead angle with the vertical. The friction force which is equal to mu into n makes an angle equal to lambda with the horizontal and is incoming so we will show outgoing. So this one is representing the friction force FF which is equal to mu multiplied by normal reaction n. So this one is our standard x axis and this one is the standard y axis. We will resolve the forces along x and y and we will take the sum along the x and y is equal to 0 and we will develop the equation here for external force P to raise the load W. The vertical component here will be the cos component. So this vertical component is same as N into cos of lambda and the horizontal component will be sine. So this horizontal component is N sine of lambda. Similarly we can resolve the friction force also. So when we resolve the friction force this angle is same as equal to lambda. So horizontal component will be cos and vertical component is sin. So actually this component is overlap with n sin lambda and its friction force is mu into n into cos of lambda. The vertical component overlap with the weight w and the vertical component is mu into n into sin of lambda. So we can apply here the conditions of equilibrium that is summation of fx0 and summation of fy0. 
if we take the summation of fy which is vertically upward is positive equal to 0 in that case n cos lambda will be positive value mu n sin lambda will be negative value and w will be negative value so we have minus w minus mu n sin lambda and n into cos lambda is acting upwards so that is positive value so we have plus n into cos of lambda must equal to 0 so we can find out the value of n that is the normal reaction so we have n into cos of lambda minus mu times sin of lambda on the right hand side we will get w so we have normal reaction n is same as equal to w divided by cos of lambda minus mu times sin of lambda and then we'll apply sigma fx equal to 0 to find out the value of p so we obtain the value of n equal to w divided by cos of lambda minus mu times sin of lambda if we apply summation of fx rightward force will take it as positive and the sum must equal to 0 so the p is acting rightward is positive value n sin lambda is negative value and mu n cos lambda is negative value so p is positive value minus n into sin lambda is negative value and minus mu into n into cos of lambda is negative value right hand side equal to zero so we are able to find out here the value of force p this time both these term will shift to the right and n can be taken common so we have n into sine of lambda plus mu into cos of lambda so from equation number one we can substitute for n in the equation number two and we can find out the expression for p so we get p n is replaced as w and divided by cos lambda minus mu sine lambda and is multiplied by sine lambda mu cos lambda so we have w into sine lambda plus mu times cos lambda divided by cos lambda cos lambda minus mu sine lambda mu sine lambda now we want to solve this further so what we'll do we'll multiply and divide it by cos lambda so we'll multiply here by cos of lambda at the same time we'll divide it by cos of lambda that is we have multiplied by 1 sin lambda by cos lambda will be tan lambda cos lambda by cos lambda will be equal to 1 cos lambda by cos lambda equal to 1 sin lambda by cos lambda will be equal to tan lambda so we get the force p is equal to w into tan of lambda plus we have mu divided by cos lambda by cos lambda that equal to 1 minus mu times sin lambda by cos lambda that equal to tan lambda at this stage we introduce mu which is equal to tan phi where phi is a friction angle so we can replace mu here as a tan phi this value of mu by tan phi so we'll get p equal to w into tan of lambda plus we have tan of phi divided by 1 minus tan of lambda into tan of phi this one is nothing but the expansion of tan lambda plus phi so we have p is equal to w into tan of lambda plus phi now we want to find out here what is the minimum torque or the smallest torque that will cause the weight w to move upward for this one we'll consider a screw whose mean diameter equal to dm and the force p which is required to raise the load will act tangentially to the screw so the force is applied on the screw and the screw are tangential to the surface so we have a force p which is applied tangentially so this radial distance will be same as equal to dm divided by 2 so the product of p multiplied by 
the radial distance dm by 2 is representing the smallest torque that will cause the weight w to move upward as well as to overcome the thread friction so we have torque to raise i will use the letter r to raise the load is equal to p multiplied by dm divided by 2 and we know the value of p is same as equal to w into tan of lambda which one is lead angle plus pi the pressure angle multiplied by radius that is the mean radius which is same as mean diameter divided by 2 the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here